It all started when I woke up today. Um, I just wanted to have a very aligned handstand. Handstand that has good alignment, everything stacked. When I watch back these videos, I see the ever so small arch in my back. And I see the very slight bit of my shoulders not being fully open. And not having... That my shoulders are slightly less than 180 degrees. And all that seems very difficult to uh, correct. I've always thought I had a very good handstand. But I think I can hopefully make some improvement um, over the next coming days. Um, today, I mainly did a lot of skills. And that's my favorite way to train. And hopefully you'll see how I do it. And maybe you'll get inspired to move around a little bit. Any movement is improvement. But here, uh, the shoulders are good, but my hips and back is arching. I did kind of the repetition prison workout squats. I always feel like this is a kind of a, fu a funny way to do squats. You know, the hands over the head. Um, every time I do it in public, I always get like some some smiles at me. And I, I like to have a little fun, you know. I've always been a little flamboyant ever since I've, um, I guess, been born. So, unfortunately, I feel like this was not the way to do it. I did not much like doing these squats. Um, the up and down motion was very mundane. Didn't give me any challenge. Maybe I should have tried to... I, I thought maybe that it would challenge my upper back some to keep my arms up. But really, I was, I, was, I was trying to create something, but I, I've crossed something off. I know something else, I need to do something else. And the more and more I hang from this um, left arm, I'm sorry, my right arm, I, I feel it getting much better. I've recently had some pain in my right arm when I do a lot of um, heavy shoulder work, like the bridge or the hollow back handstand. But... I, I, I know the feeling that how I developed the pain, and it's getting reversed. So it now doesn't hurt, but it like almost hurts. And I just know that the more and more I do this one arm hanging, just the better and better it'll feel. I've also done some uh, pull-up variations here. And I think I'll do a video just talking about the different ways to do pull-ups. I'm doing a arched back pull-up, arching to the fullest, trying to arch the most trying to get my chest to touch the bar but very difficult working on the back flips um, for some reason i'm turning onto one side um i'm doing i end up doing a back handspring i can't quite do a back flip i've done one back flip almost kind of and working on the flares um i'm feeling like i'm really stagnating with the flares but I can do one flare, both directions. Uh, one and a half flares, I guess, both directions. And I'll work on it. Now, this is an exercise I will not be doing in public. Only broadcasting it on the internet for the whole world to see. But training uh, the neck, nevertheless. Um, the top part of your core, part of your body. Um, I, I guess also training your, your jaw. But doing a little bit to strengthen the neck. That one was a little bit better. I got a little bit more height. I was enjoying the weather outside too. Very nice. Okay, and here is some hypertrophy work. Focusing on a very controlled uh, eccentric, the lowering part. And I took it to a technical failure, a little bit beyond technical failure, but calves are very, very difficult to train. Outside of the physical training, I like to read Robert Greene, and I, I've been very interested in buying a, um, a flamenco songbook. So if any of you guys know about any flamenco songbooks or have a spare flamenco songbook you'd like to give me, uh, let me know. But besides wanting a flamenco songbook, I've been reading uh, Robert Greene, one of my um, probably my favorite author. I just really am uh, enjoying the way he puts together words. He says that the present moment is like you sitting, standing at the bottom of a, of a mountain. And as time passes, you climb the mountain. Pretty much saying that, you know, three months ago, uh, today, 
might seem a little bit different. You might have a different perspective on what today really was. And an abridged point of it is to, you know, think about the present moment and how the passing of time will affect it because it is um, very much in our nature to, you know, very be very engrossed into the present. But the passage of time is inevitable. Now here, the, me working on the bridge, I've used to bend my arms, but now I'm keeping the arms completely straight, or as straight as I can. And I think that was the main reason that I had shoulder pain, is because I'd bend the arms and not develop, and I, and I would very much develop the bridge with bent arms, which I think the arms should be straight. So I'm working on it, feeling... Uh, much better and then here is a uh, sort of a middle split focused stretching routine i used to be very good at the pancake stretch but i haven't done it too often but doing it felt very tight very painful this is not the pancake this is a taylor's pose but when i get to it it's coming back it takes some time to come back like most things and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Leave a comment if you want to see a Q&A video, some questions you'd like to see in a Q&A type video. Here is a... I'm, I'm trying to get the knees as low as possible. Keeping the stretch within the hips and not the knees. This is not a knee stretch. And in fact, I don't think there are knee stretches because the knee just kind of has its open and close range of motion. There's not really much to stretch in the knee. At least for me, if you are um, haven't used your knees and bent them fully, maybe you do. But here's what I'm talking about the uh, the pancake pose. Been quite a while since I've done this, and it was very tight. If you fully do the pancake pose to its extreme, you end up doing the middle splits. So I guess that's another avenue, uh, another angle that I can attack um, the position and recover from those attacks to have a more resilient body that's more capable of doing middle splits. So nighttime stretching, I've said it once, I'll say it again. Best time to stretch is at night before you go to bed because you'll be um, very still, hopefully sleeping very peacefully. Um, I heard sleep is very important for um you know life and everything i have uh, some trouble sleeping i don't sleep very well at the current moment but i'm trying to do things to help that so if you can uh, sleep you know if, if you're able to sleep at night uh you feel very lucky here i'm just working through a squat uh, sometimes even doing a squat will aggravate the shoulder um I think actually the squat here was the most pain that my shoulder's been in quite a while, which is very strange that the squat itself would cause shoulder pain more than, you know, a handstand or doing a bridge or anything. And then don't forget hands and fingers, very small parts of the body that don't grow and don't look um, like they change at all in pictures or magazine covers, but can be trained. They are made out of tendons, not muscles. So just be aware of the difference in training tendons versus muscles, connective tissue and all that. The gist is, is they take longer to train. They don't have a blood supply, do not have a blood supply. And you just need to apply a force to them um, and hold it for quite a while. And then after the fingers, don't forget the feet. Feet are very important to train. Toes are often neglected cramped in uh, conventional shoes and the ankle is the most commonly injured uh, body part so take extra precaution to fortify the ankle uh, if you're going to do anything new be mindful of the ankles that's the most likely thing you'll injure so always be mindful of the ankles and how to fortify them please like comment and subscribe bye bye